Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of The Wisdom Meditation. We're going to be dealing with Psalm 26, day after Christmas. Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas, happy, enjoyable dinner with family and friends, and some of you undoubtedly gathered together illegally. God bless you. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, I mean, this, this stuff is utterly ridiculous. You know, when you hear... It's Dr. Burks telling everybody, stay at home, don't get around with family, don't go anywhere. And, and then she goes off to a second home and, and uh, has Christmas holidays or Thanksgiving holiday, I guess it was, with three generations of her family. She said they, they, her family was hurting. Well, everybody's family's hurting. So uh, I'm glad that you, I hope that all of you paid no attention to this nonsense other than, you know, the things that you feel are important for the safety and security of your own family. Pay no attention to these nonsense and hypocritical edicts that these so-called government bureaucrats are, are dispensing to the American people, telling us what was good for us, but that apparently it's not good for them. So they're doing whatever they want to do, but telling us, you know, you, you can't, you mustn't, don't. But in the meantime, they can, they must, and they do. So... Um, my, my wife and and one of my children had a, a just a glorious uh, time yesterday. Wonderful dinner. My wife is a great cook, and we yeah, we had a good time. So Merry Christmas, belatedly everybody, and hope that the the, the lingering joy of the holiday is still with you, uh, no matter what's going on around us. And and by the way, obviously. Um, there was an attempt by some evil person to mark Christmas with this bombing in Tennessee, in Nashville. Thank God, only three people were injured. They did find uh, the remains of one person, but nobody really knows what that's all about, whether that was the perpetrator or whether that's some innocent individual who they have not yet identified, nobody knows. So we don't know whether that's the death of, as a result of the bombing or not, but the, the remains uh, of one person were found in the debris. But at any rate, you know what? As tragic as that is, and as, as profoundly concerned as I am for the safety and security of the American people, uh, I wouldn't let that steal my joy. I'm not gonna let some evil person steal the joy of the holiday from us. And so we went on to have a wonderful time, praying, of course, for all those affected by it, and, uh, and, and just trusting God that we will find out who this evil perpetrator is and bring him to justice, or him or her, I suppose. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you had a wonderful holiday and a uh, wonderful Christmas day, and hope you're gonna enjoy the rest of the day. And by the way, uh, I, you know what, I'll get to that. I'll, I'll get to announcements when we come to the end. Let's, let's try to get right to the word here, shall we? Oh, and by the way, um, congratulations to those six police officers. Maybe congratulations is not the right word, but but uh, just just my gratitude goes out to those six police officers who risked their lives yesterday to clear everyone out of the danger zone of that bomb. I mean, they had a very short window to do that in. They put their own lives on the line to do it in. And by the way, I'm sure you're hearing that one theory of this is that the perpetrator was intending to kill police, that that was what, what, was, what it was all about. That's what the 911 call luring them to the scene was all about, hoping that they'd get a bunch of them there, the bomb that explodes and kills a lot of police officers. Uh, but, but the six police officers who went into that danger zone and, uh, and cleared out people save lives, and as always, uh, excuse me, folks, uh, I was about to sneeze, as always, um, these, these, these people are, are heroes. Uh, they really are. And they have not deserved the vilification and the attacks and the opprobrium and the slander and the lies that have been hurled against them this entire year, practically. They have not deserved it. Uh, right now, I think it's uh, I think it's the city of Baltimore. Um, I think it's the city of Baltimore, but all over the country, it's the same deal. Five hundred officers short of what they need to do the job. 
uh, because they're under attack everywhere. And, and so, by the way, not only to defund the police and, and dismantle the police, it is taking root in the, in the hearts and minds of some people in these leftist cities across our country. But who wants to join the police department of any city right now? Who, who needs that? Who needs the, the headache? So you probably got, uh, uh, and I, in fact, I've had it verified from some of the police officers I know who are friends of mine, recruitment is tough right now. It's tough. Because who wants to do a job where you're paid little, you put your life on the line, and if you make an honest mistake in judgment and someone else gets injured or killed, an honest mistake in judgment, not an intentional flouting of the law, but an honest mistake in judgment, not only could you lose your job, which is likely, you could lose your freedom. You'd be locked up. Look, we need police officers. Any of you out there right now watching me who are thinking about it, I encourage you, in spite of all the craziness that's going on, we as a society need you. Get out there and, 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 and put that uniform on and do an honorable job. Don't let the stuff that's going on dissuade you from stepping up. You know, I really believe that the very best police officers are called by God to do that job. You know, the word of God speaks of, of those who bear the sword of, of authority, that they don't bear it in vain. It's to punish the evildoers. And those police officers out there trying to clean up our streets from people who would do us harm, uh, we need you. If you're, if you're a person considering that right now, considering joining the police force right now, but you've been a little reluctant or reticent, or you know somebody who is because of the, the terrible time they've gotten this year, it's been going on for a while now, but just reached a level of intensity this year like nothing I've ever seen, uh, do it anyway. Do it anyway. It's honorable, and believe me, you will have the gratitude of millions of decent Americans who understand what you do. Uh, so God bless those police officers who went into harm's way to make sure that innocent citizens were not caught up in that explosion. And we owe them as we do all police officers who are doing their job honorably. And that is, the that is I believe, 99.9% .9 of them and maybe 99.999999% of them we owe them a debt of gratitude, uh, and, and, and we are, we're, our prayers are with them, uh, our love is with them, and our deep appreciation is with them for the dangerous and difficult job that they do for us every day. So God bless you. Uh, look, let's get to the psalm. Uh, to psalm. Let's get to the proverb here, okay? Uh, proverb 26, the day after Christmas. Uh, this is a slightly shorter one, so let's see if we can get through this one. And um, what, what's going on here? Let me get my technology working properly. Proverbs 26, verse 1. There we go. Proverbs 26, verse 1. As snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without a cause will not alight. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the fool's back. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. He who sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence like the legs of the lame that hang limp is a proverb in the mouth of fools like the one who binds a stone in a sling is he who gives honor to a fool like a thorn that goes into the hand of a drunkard is a proverb in the mouth of fools the great god who formed everything gives the fool his hire and the transgressor his wages as a dog returns to his own vomit so a fool repeats his folly. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. The lazy man says, there's a lion in the road. A fierce lion is in the streets. In other words, he's using any excuse he can find to not get up and go do something. As the door turns on its hinges, 
so does the lazy man on his bed. The lazy man buries his hand in the bowl. It wearies him to bring it back to his mouth. <laughs> you know, that's lazy. <laughs> so you stick the fork in the, in the bowl and you're too lazy to put it in your mouth. It says the lazy man is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. He who passes by and meddles in a quarrel not his own is like one who takes a dog by the ears. Like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no talebearer, strife ceases. As charcoal is to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Ah, there we talk about the man as opposed to the woman. The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the inmost body. Fervent lips with a wicked heart are like earthenware covered with silver dross. He who hates disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. All right, let's go to the first, uh, actually the second. Uh, second verse, second verse, second like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause will not alight. You know, when Joe Biden stood up and said the darkest days of the COVID pandemic are ahead of us, you know what he was doing? He was pronouncing a curse on America. Now, I know if you're watching and you're a secularist and you don't understand spiritual matters, then I know you don't, you don't get what I'm saying. It probably seems crazy to you. But, you know, the word of God says death and life are in the power of the tongue. What is that? I think that's Proverbs 21, 18, if I'm not mistaken. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. When he stood up and said, as according to some at least, I've never called him this, but uh, many are calling him president-elect. This is the first time I've even used those words, believe me, because I don't believe he is. But many do, and many are already submitting it to his authority and believing that this is the next president of the United States. I'm not yet. I'm not convinced. He was pronouncing a curse on this nation the darkest days of COVID are ahead of us, not behind us. Well, then what's the, what's, the, what's the vaccine all about? What is this stuff? We keep learning more and more about the disease. What is that all about? What are all the lockdowns all about? So what, are we going to be locked down for the next two or three years or something? I mean, what, what, you know, people don't understand. A leader can either curse or bless that which he leads. And we've had a president for the last four years, people can like him, they can say whatever they want to say. For the last four years, and I'm not talking about what he said about other people or to other people and all that. For the last four years, President Donald J. Trump has blessed America. I love America, he says. I love our country. It's a beautiful country. We're going to make America great again. We're going to put America first. America is going to succeed. America is going to grow. America is going to thrive. America is going to prosper. He has blessed this country for the last four years. The words of his mouth have been blessing. And Joe Biden is not even in office yet, and he's already pronouncing curses on our country. But praise God, the word says a curse without a cause will not alight. In other words, it can have its impact. It can have its power if it doesn't have something to root and ground itself in. 
So he can say all that mess he wants to, but you know what? The darkest days for me are not ahead. I don't have dark days ahead. The word says the path of the righteous is like the shining sun that shines ever bright unto the perfect day. That's my word upon you. That's my word upon our country. And that's my word upon my own life. Don't, don't let, don't, don't, you know, this is, this is the, the blindness of the American people electing leaders that curse the country. You know, I don't mean to, to relive the past, but it's instructive for us, okay? And I'm not bitter or angry or hateful toward this man. But you know, Barack and Michelle Obama don't love America. They don't. You, you show me one instance, just give me one, where either one of them, I'll take either one, has expressed love, affection, admiration to this nation. Find me one. You won't because they don't. And the only thing they can do, people like that can do, is pronounce a curse because they don't have any blessing in them for it. Remember, he went around the world criticizing America abroad. Well, America's dismissive. America's derisive. America's. Remember when people were concerned about Islamic terror, we still are, but in this, I mean, I don't know whether this is an instance of one down in Tennessee or not, but. When people were expressing their concern, he was, of course, always quick to defend Islam, and not quick at all to defend Christianity, by the way, but claimed to be a Christian, but wouldn't, never defended Christianity, but he defended Islam to the hilt. And he said, you know, don't get on your high horse. Remember the Crusades? He had to go all the way back to a, 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 a thousand years to find something to make sure that Christians and Americans didn't get on our high horse in criticizing Islam. I mean, we're not the Crusaders. And by the way, the Crusaders were responding to Islamic terror then. So all this vilification of the Crusaders like they were the worst people in the world. And I'm not saying that atrocities didn't happen. I mean, my goodness, it was 1000 AD. <laughs> atrocities were happening everywhere. The whole, the, the level of moral sensibility was far different than it is today. But nevertheless, those crusaders were on a, a noble mission to take back the uh, Holy Land from the brutal Muslims who had taken it over. So, but, but that's another matter. I, mean, I don't even want to get off into that. That'll start me on a whole thing about Islam, and I, I don't want to start on that right now. But you see my point? People who don't have it in their heart can't bless America because they don't love America. All they can do is curse it. And this guy, before he can get, even get in office, he's cursing that the darkest days are ahead. Well, you know what? He can have that. He can take that, go put it on the, in his own pot, cook it, and eat all he wants of it. I'm not having it. That mess goes into my garbage. It goes down my garbage disposal. Okay? So... All of us as Christians need to be blessing our country. That doesn't mean our, we believe that our country does everything right. We, don't, we know it doesn't. We know it doesn't. And we don't excuse away wrong. We don't do that as Christians. We don't justify wickedness. But, but, we see the founding of our country as rooted and grounded in God. And we believe that America is a providential nation and we believe that God wants to bless, not curse America. And so we come in agreement with God and we bless America. Israel hasn't done everything right. We know that because they're human beings. Of course they make mistakes. But we bless Israel. Why? Because the word says, you bless Israel, I'll bless you. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And by, by the way, you know, people like that, they also don't bless... I mean, Barack Obama was a closet anti-Semite, believe me, believe me. He had no use for Israel at all. But of course, as the president of the United States, he couldn't just denounce Israel, so all he could do was stick Bibi Netanyahu down in the basement of the White House and ignore him, disrespect him, treat him poorly. You remember for the first time, quote, Michelle Obama, for the first time in my life, I'm proud of my country. Why? Because they elected your husband. That's all. 
I got news for her. America's done a whole lot better than that. And a whole lot more than that throughout our history. Even in moments where we're making terrible, making terrible mistakes, America was also doing tremendously good things. So just wanted to get that out there. The darkest days are not ahead of us. What, what is ahead of us, for those of us who are believers, for those of us who will pronounce the blessing on our country, America, I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. The brightest days are ahead. The best days are ahead. I mean, that's what you want to tell people. The darkest days are ahead. I could all get go off on COVID and all that stuff, but I, I won't do that. Let's let's continue. I want a, a couple more scriptures. I want to hit, and I don't want to go over my. I, I've got a time allotted in my head, and I'm going to probably have to put a timer down <laughs> on my desk while I'm teaching this in order to stay within it. But I'm going to tell you what it is because then you'll say you'll be measuring me. Say so you went you went way over your time. Okay. Uh, fourth verse. These look contradictory, fourth and fifth verses. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. It's very simple. Don't act like a fool when you respond to foolishness. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Don't act like the fool when you respond to foolishness. So don't, don't answer him according to his folly. Don't be like him. So you, a fool is acting crazy. You bring the wisdom of God to bear. But then it says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. So not answering a fool with foolishness like his doesn't mean you shouldn't correct a fool. I mean, they're dead and gone and in hell, I assume. Uh, but Karl Marx and, and uh, Charles Darwin, in, in my mind, are two of the biggest fools in human history. Because they both believed that there is no God and that the key to, to life is godless and godlessness. They're big fools. I don't answer those fools according to their folly. I correct those fools according to their folly. Right? So, and those are dead people, so nobody can criticize me for insulting anybody alive, but the Bible says the fool is said in his heart, there is no God. So if you are watching right now, and you, that means you are alive, and you don't believe there's a God, you are a fool. And I don't say that with any pleasure, but I would encourage you to come out of your foolishness and to understand that there is a God. There's one true and living God. It's not Allah. It's not Buddha. It's not the millions of Hindu gods. Uh, it's not uh, L. Ron Hubbard. Okay. It wasn't David Koresh. It wasn't Jim Jones. The true and the living God is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's it. That's all. There is nothing else. Everything else is a lie. That's why I said Judaism is not a false religion because Judaism believes in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of Jesus Christ. But everything else, foolishness, made up stuff. Allah made up stuff. Well, no, no. Allah is the same as the God of the Bible. No, 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 no. The God of the Bible is real. The God of the Islam is made up by Muhammad because the two contradict each other and God is not a man that he should lie. So he doesn't talk out of one side of his mouth one time and then talk out of another another time. And the Quran denies the deity of Jesus Christ and therefore the Quran is built. That, that is a lie and therefore the Quran is built on a lie. Okay, um, how did I get off on that? <laughs> but at any rate, um, so, so don't answer a fool according to his folly and be foolish like he is, but correct the fool because he needs to be corrected. Okay, and anybody believing in anything but the God of the Bible is a fool. Now, I didn't, that's not Bishop Jackson's opinion. That's what the word says. 12th verse says, do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There's more hope for a fool than him. Now, there are a lot of scriptures that pertain to this. Isaiah 5, 20 and 21. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 
Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. That's foolishness. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. I am not going to allow this country to be led by the likes of Karl Marx. And that's what some of these people want. I think that's what the Democrat Party increasingly wants. I think they really want us to be a more Marxist nation. They're trying to elect this guy, Warnock, and, and Osef down there. And Warnock is, is a confirmed Marxist. I'm not making it up. I know. Some people don't like to hear me say that, but it's the truth. And we're, we're not turning our country over to a bunch of Marxists, period. You know, these people are in love with Karl Marx and they hate Thomas Jefferson. They want to they quote Marx and, and tear down the statue of Jefferson. I mean, what, how, how idiotic can you be? Yeah, Jefferson owned slaves. Yeah. Okay. But there's nobody watching me who was a slave, and there's nobody watching me who was a slave owner, and I was never a slave, and Thomas Jefferson was mistaken, and he, he denounced slavery, but he never was able to really get beyond it in terms of his, of his behavior and his conduct, but he was still a great man who made a great contribution to humanity, and so, but, but still, we denounce Thomas Jefferson, we want Thomas Jefferson's statues torn down, and, and we elevate Karl Marx when Karl Marx wanted to turn the whole world into slaves. Are you kidding me? How, you know, sometimes you just wonder how people can be that backwards and that stupid. But I love him anyway. All right. Um, 16th verse says, the lazy man is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. Well, of course, he, he thinks he knows everything, right? <laughs> you, know, you try to tell people who don't want to do anything in life, you try to instruct them and try to give them guidance. And you know what? They did, they, you, you, this, this is the, 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 the most popular answer you'll hear from, some, from somebody who doesn't want to do anything. You, you tell them something that is valuable to them and they say, oh, yeah, I know. No, you don't know. <laughs> you know, you you might know it up here, but you clearly don't know it in here, and it's not translating out there. You're not doing anything with it, so you don't really know. <laughs> you know, when my children were growing up, they used to I used to correct them, and they of course children. Well, Daddy, I know. I said, No, you don't know. <laughs> you know, you don't know. <laughs> and that's the way people. The, we got adults who think they know everything and don't know anything. 18th verse says, like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. You know, the Bible cautions, it commands us not to engage in coarse jesting. This, the, what this says is, the man who deceives his neighbor, it means the man who cheats his neighbor, hurts his neighbor, in some way does something bad to his neighbor, and then says, I was only joking, or I didn't really mean it. No, that's like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death. In other words, that stuff is deadly. That's, that's deadly. You know, about joking, I, I have a rule, and my rule is, I'm, I'm particularly among friends, I mean, I might joke about, you know, public figures or something like that, but never, never in a coarse or profane way. But, but uh, I have a rule, which is my jokes should never be at someone else's expense unless they are joining in good humor. You know what I mean? Good humor. Now, my wife and I joke with each other all the time and, and laugh at each other all the time and make fun of you know, some of the things we do with, uh, from time to time because we know each other, of course, better than anybody else knows us. And we, we laugh all the time. And, and sometimes my children join in with the laughter, but we're not, it's not hurtful. It's not, it's, you know, we laugh at our little foibles and idiosyncrasies. In fact, I'm always accused by my family of having you know, all these idiosyncrasies. <laughs> my, 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 I got to tell you this. My youngest daughter said to me one time, she was a child at the time, and I was correcting her about something and telling her something. <laughs> and I said, <clears throat> now, Jackie, I feel very strongly about this. And my daughter turned to me just innocently. She said, Daddy, Daddy, you feel strongly about everything. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, 
And, you know, so my family often laughs about my idiosyncrasies. And then I say to my wife, I said, right, because you have no idiosyncrasies. And then everybody laughs about that because, of course, we all have them, right? But, but joking at people's expense is wrong. Joking in a way that seeks to ridicule or denigrate or, or harm other people is wrong. And we shouldn't do that. You know, we shouldn't do that. If someone is hurt by the joking that we do, we are doing, then we should stop doing it. Okay? Just a little, little side note there. Um, but this goes to a, a more specific issue of really hurting somebody and then saying, well, actually, it is related, isn't it? Hurting somebody and then saying, oh, I, I was only joking. Yeah. The Bible says don't do it because it's like throwing firebrands, arrows, and death. 23rd verse, fervent lips with a wicked heart are like earthenware covered with silver. You know what that means, right? Outside, sweetness and peaches and cream. Inside, demonic to the bone. You know, it's a fervent lips with a wicked heart. You know, I'm sure you've met people from time to time who said something flattering to you or something, you know, that was that seemed nice, but something about it just didn't seem right. It didn't seem sincere. It didn't seem authentic. And, you know, I, I've been in ministry for a long time, and I've met some wonderful people. I want to get that out right away. I really have. I've met some wonderful people. i got wonderful members in my church, and I'm just so thankful to God and so blessed. But, you know, I've met some people who would smile in your face and stab you in your back. And just with the smoothness of a surgeon. Uh, so... This is warning us about fervent lips with a wicked heart. You know, you get that check in your spirit about somebody, stop, pause. I've had that happen and ignored it to my own detriment, where I felt like something's not right, but I just went on anyway to my own detriment. And you know what? That's the last verse. Oh, my goodness. Well, I won't tell you how long over my time I am, but I'm over my time. Uh, look. Church on tomorrow morning at 943 Canal Drive. If you don't have a church to go to, your church is closed, or you're just looking for a church that's going to teach the word, come on over. 943 Canal Drive, 11 o'clock. Now, we don't require people to wear masks at our church, but we do have masks. We do have hand sanitizer uh, because we're not going to get into kicking people out of the church and all that. I mean, that, that's crazy. That's just crazy. Uh, and that's not what God has called us to do. We are open, warm, inviting church. But if you feel comfortable wearing a mask, nobody has a problem with that. You, you're certainly welcome to wear one, okay? Um, we want you to feel safe, and we want you to feel secure uh, in coming to our ministry. We've never had an outbreak of COVID. We've, we've had people who belong to the church who caught it, but they caught it somewhere else and then quarantined themselves and came back. But, but we've had no outbreak in our church at all. You all know that I had it, but I was traveling and hadn't been in church for a month. So I know I hadn't exposed anybody in church because I hadn't been there. Um, so our church has been a very safe place to worship. And as you all know, we haven't closed our doors at all. Not once, not one Sunday have we closed. Been open every single Sunday. And so you're welcome to come. I'd invite you to come. And I'm teaching a series right now that I started back in November and I'm gonna wrap up the year with it and continue it next year. Growing toward perfection, growing toward perfection. And I'm going to be examining what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ? What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? What are the attributes? And, and, and how should we, how do we make progress as disciples of Jesus Christ? I think you'll find it very fascinating. If you want to grow spiritually, you don't want to miss this series. And of course, we'll be live streaming it at 1145 uh, on Sunday morning, tomorrow morning. And you're certainly welcome. If you're staying at home, you're certainly welcome to watch it that way as well. Hey, if you want to support our church, support our ministry, you can go to thecall.org to contribute there or to just write a nice comment. Or you can go to standamerica.us to contribute there or just say something to us, encouraging us. Uh, because it's not only me, but I've got a whole team of people who work with me. And I'm sure everybody is always encouraged to hear from our supporters and, and our viewers and listeners and however you're checking out what I'm doing. 
uh, it's always encouraging to hear from you, not only from me, but for the people who work with me. And don't forget, tomorrow, uh, Monday morning, at uh, Monday morning, Monday at 1 p.m., Monday through Friday, 1 p.m., AFR.net. I'm a talk show host on a program called The Awakening. And uh, that's where I discuss all the political issues of the day. Uh, so look forward to having some kind of connection with you somewhere along the way. Uh, I'm not speaking. I don't have a public speaking engagement until late January in Oklahoma. Um, and so if you're watching me right now and you're out that way, stand by. I'll give you instructions on where, I, where I'm going to be. Uh, and I'm be glad to meet you there. So listen, God bless you all. May heaven smile upon you. I love you. Pray for me. I'm praying for you all. I'm praying for our country. I may not know you personally, but I'm praying for our country. I'm praying for every single one of our citizens, those who don't agree with me as well as those who do. And I really mean that. And in the meantime, remember, we cannot be defeated if we will not quit because we are on God's side.